Welcome everybody to the St. Louis Cardinals franchise here on MLB The Show 24. Today the work begins as we look to turn the St. Louis Cardinals into a championship team once again. We open in the 2024 season. We'll go through opening day and much of the first month of the season. My goal here early in the series is to lay the foundation, let you get to know this team before I look to make my changes that I think will bring this team much more success. I went over how veteran focused this roster build is back in the first video. When healthy, our starting rotation has nobody under 32 years old. Our best two players are arguably two corner infielders that have a combined 23 years major league experience. And overall, I'm just not all that impressed with the youth on this team and the prospects in the organization. I think there is a lot of work to do, especially to get this team back to the top. We're going to start by going through the series against the LA Dodgers, who really helped set the standard for what it takes to compete in the National League right now. Maybe they haven't been consistently making World Series, but they are regular season juggernauts, and it would be a shock if they won less than 100 games. As far as the starting lineup and rotation goes, I have put in what the Cardinals had in real life on opening day for their pitching staff order for the batting order and I've also tried my best to replicate the injuries that they've experienced prior to opening day. I'm not concerned with anything post opening day. I wanted to get the right starting point and then we'll go from there. It's our universe. Whatever happens happens and I have edited a lot of the injuries into opposing teams as well but I can't control everything they do, so the Dodgers will not pitch Tyler Glass now against us in our first game, as instead we'll face Yoshinobu Yamamoto. I'm pretty stoked to get this series underway. I had a great time with the Oakland A's last year, and I'm trying to take what I learned to make another series that hopefully builds upon the formula and delivers another great franchise experience. If you would please leave a like, I'd very much appreciate it. And if you want to follow this series along, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're just getting started. And we do so on opening day in Los Angeles. Yoshinobu Yamamoto making his major league debut after signing the $325 million contract. And it's Brendan Donovan. First up for our Cardinals, he mans left field and strikes out on the cutter as Yamamoto wastes no time in picking up that first big league strikeout. Next, you got the veteran first baseman, one of the better first basemen of the past decade in Paul Goldschmidt. He goes down looking on the fastball for the second out. Batting third is second baseman Nolan Gorman, who last year really broke out in the big way for the Cards. Now 23 years old, he delivers our first base hit of the year. After him, Nolan Arenado with a base hit through the middle. I also want to point out down below, we are projected right now to be an 82 win team basically, like a 500 team. That would be a disappointment for what this team built and hoped they would accomplish with this core. And Wilson Contreras ends the inning with a strikeout. Making the opening day start is not Sonny Gray. He'll come off the IL a little bit later. It's Miles Michaelis. Fly ball center field, it's Mookie Betts. And he flies out to the rookie, Victor Scott. Bottom two, Shohei Otani. Now with the LA Dodgers and down on strikes in his first day B. It is a strikeout for Michaelis. We don't have the most overpowering pitchers in this staff. We have pitchers who rely a lot more on their control. Really good at bat here for Michaelis to get Otani. Still in the second inning, it is James Outman with a fly ball into the gap and running it down. Victor Scott with great speed has outstanding range in center. Still scoreless, bottom three. Michaelis gets Jason Hayward to climb the ladder and comes up empty. 
These pitchers were trading zeros back in fourth. Yamamoto gets Gorman looking in the top of the fourth inning. We go bottom four, Shohei Otani. It's a diving stop by Gorman to get him as Michaelis would put up another zero in the bottom of the fourth. We move ahead, fifth inning. Newly signed, Teoscar Hernandez down on strikes. Scoreless through five. So we head into the sixth inning where Yamamoto gets Gorman looking again. He was seriously sharp in this outing, and Michaelis did his best to match him. Gorman to his right, off balance, doesn't matter, perfect throw. Freddie Freeman with Michaelis at 85 pitches, and this is in the shallow left center field. What an outing for Miles Michaelis. To go six scoreless, it's so disappointing to not get any run support to back that up. Top of the seventh. Wilson Contreras, another strikeout victim of Yamamoto. That was number eight. Bottom seven, Michael is still in. Shohei Otani takes him out to right field. And the Dodgers are on the board. It's the first run of the game. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Not quite a moonshot. It barely got out, but it counts. That would be it for Miles Michaelis. Six innings, one run allowed, four strikeouts, and a walk. But honestly, that's better than we could have hoped for. We then bring in long reliever Matthew Liberator. One of the better prospects I think we have in this organization when it comes to pitching. Now we're bottom eight, two on, two down. Little inside out swing, deep in the corner, a fair ball. Freddie Freeman gets extra bases and brings home two more for the Dodgers as they take a 3-0 lead. In his Major League debut, Yoshinobu Yamamoto goes for the complete game shutout. He strikes out Brendan Donovan to open the ninth. Next, it's Paul Goldschmidt on his 100th pitch, and it's a base hit into right. Just the fourth to that point for St. Louis. Followed up by Gorman single into center field. Two aboard and the tying run at the plate. The Dodgers don't take any chances and they go to their bullpen and bring out closer Evan Phillips. Big spot, Nolan Arenado. Cold strike three. And Arenado can't believe it. Furious at the home plate umpire as the Dodgers get one out away from a win. It comes down to Wilson Contreras. 3-2 count. Cold strike three and the Dodgers wrap up their win here on our opening day. It's their third game of the year, our first, and we had barely gotten started offensively. Not scoring a run and just getting five hits. We wasted a really good pitching opportunity. Miles Michaelis gave us about the best we can ask from him. And so we go into game two. You can't get too high, you can't get too low. Baseball is a marathon. So second game of the year, first inning, we have the bases loaded. One down and Wilson Contreras versus Bobby Miller. A slow roller. Mookie goes behind the back and they get two. A highlight real play from Mookie Betts. Now moved a shortstop and making it look ridiculously simple. I mean, this wasn't even close. We get nothing. And Zach Thompson gets the start now with Sonny Gray out of the rotation. Bottom one. Miguel Rojas at the plate. Turns on the high cutter, sends it to deep left, and the Dodgers get on the board here in the first. Thompson probably becomes a full-time reliever once we're back to full strength. Bottom two. How about this single from Will Smith? That is 113 off the bat. Chris Taylor, he takes ball four, and the Dodgers load the bases. That brings up... Mookie Betts. 
hanging curveball absolutely obliterated and a grand slam 5 nothing Dodgers and two unbelievable highlights already for Mookie Betts we go to our bullpen and those of you that watch the A's franchise will know a lot about Andre Palante and the first batter he faces was also a part of our team in the A's franchise for a little bit and it's Andre Palante striking out Teoscar Hernandez. But they would face again in the fifth inning with the runner on third that is hit well enough to bring home the sixth run for Los Angeles. We go top six now. Runner on for Nolan Gorman. Gets a hold of one pretty well there. Deep right center. That is back and gone. Finally. After 14 scoreless innings to start the year, we're on the board with a Nolan Gorman home run. He hit 27 of those last year, and he's one of those players we can still expect to get even better. Bottom six, Andre Palante gives up the inside-out swing. It's dumped in right by Chris Taylor. Miguel Rojas next as Liberator enters, and that is going to find Grass in left center, and that brings home the seventh run for L.A. And the Dodgers would go on to win this game. Final score, 7-3. to three. Two losses where you don't feel very good about the way things are going. We go on to game three against the Dodgers, hoping we can reverse our fortunes and try to get off to a better start especially offensively. I thought it was a good setup with the Dodgers having a bullpen game and Bruce Dargraderall getting the start. We've got those classic blue jerseys and that is over the head of Jason Hayward. That's Brendan Donovan who gets the leadoff double followed up by Paul Goldschmidt sending one sky high. And there's Mookie Betts again. Nolan Arenado follows. Ground ball, third base, and the double does not come around. Here in game three, you've got the return of Lance Lynn here with the Cardinals. After opening his career in St. Louis, he then left for five years, now returns in a pivotal year and strikes out Shohei Otani here in the first. Still to aboard, Max Muncie. Nice pick there by Arenado. And the Dodgers leave two aboard. Now we'll take this into the fourth inning. Still scoreless. It's Otani. That's headed to left center field. It splits the shifted outfield. Otani, though, doesn't stop at second. He wants three, and he's out by a mile. Started by Victor Scott in the outfield. Let's go top five. Jordan Walker at the plate for St. Louis. And that pitch left over the middle, clobbered to deep left. And Walker is on the board here in 2024. And we're hoping he is just getting started this year. 2-0 Cardinals. That one's left over the middle. It's Donovan. Another extra base hit. He almost muscles that out. Krismet having a tough time here in the fifth inning. And then Paul Goldschmidt. Deep left field, that is gone. Another two-run shot. The Cardinals put four on the board. Their best inning so far. Lance Lynn, scoreless through four, now pitching with the lead. James Outman watching this one go just foul by less than two feet. However, the 3-2 would miss inside. Dodgers put two aboard with nobody out. Hernandez past the diving Arenado. It's in the left field. And the Dodgers get their first run on the board. Back to the top of the order in Mookie Betts. Soft fly ball in the shallow center. Another run comes around and the Dodgers still have two aboard. Gavin Lux now 0 for 2. He's in the hit column. Base hit center field. And the Dodgers get their third. Trying to finish off this inning. Freddie Freeman, he takes the hanging slurve into right field. 
They wave bets home. And this game is tied just like that. Shohei Otani, runners at the corners. Base hit right field, and the Dodgers put five on the board. We finally have a strong inning, and the Dodgers have to go and one-up us. We go into our bullpen. Here is John King. Left on left against Max Muncy. Another one into right field. A slow roller. The Dodgers bring home another runner as Freddie Freeman slides in safely. A six-run inning. And we're still not done. Same hit that Betts had. Will Smith is on the board. And up to third base is Muncy. Seven to four. Hernandez, base hit right field. This Dodger offense is relentless. It is eight to four. Jason Hayward, and finally a play by Goldschmidt, but he throws it away. In the left field, two more runs score, and the Dodgers have a 10 run inning. I think this all just speaks for itself. We have all these bad pitches and the exclamation point right there. You've got one of your veteran leaders just throwing one away, a two-run error. In the sixth inning, they'd come back for more. This is a really scary team. Freddie Freeman homers, then comes back bottom seven, says, give me two more RBIs on a double. Dodgers take the first three, all of them convincingly. Final score in this one is 14 to 6. LA had 20 hits. Yeah, this team ain't World Series caliber. No one's convincing me of that. You know, whoever makes the schedules isn't much of a Cardinal fan if they give us four straight in Los Angeles to open the year. The final game of the series was much closer, but we still lost, despite a three home run day from Paul Goldschmidt. Like, let me repeat that again. Paul Goldschmidt hit three homers. We had four runs and lost. Three solo shots, man. Anything we do right is going to waste. We come back in the following series and we get a couple gems against the Padres. Goldschmidt homered again as Kyle Gibson went complete game shutout on the Padres. The following day was a really strong performance from Jordan Walker who had two doubles plus a triple. As Miles Michaelis followed up his great opening day start with an even better one in a victory. The two Nolans went yard in our final game against the Padres, but the Padres managed to win after more runs were surrendered by Zach Thompson, who hasn't looked great so far, and neither has Matthew Liberator. You cannot be first out of the bullpen if you give up runs in literally every outing. We would then lose a close game in our first against the Marlins, with Lance Lynn giving up five. Steven Matz would have a rough outing as we lost the following game. But we'd at least avoid the brooms winning the finale against the Marlins and Kyle Gibson was again excellent. And that takes us to where we are right now with a 3-7 and seven record. It is not a very strong start to the year and we've got to start putting up some wins or we're going to be into full-on sell mode. Now, I'm obviously picking the Cardinals for this series because I believe they're a good candidate to be rebuilt and to be completely overhauled. I'm still going to try to win. I just believe that the team is going to perform a certain way. And if I get confirmation, you know what will come next. But I hope you enjoy this first episode. Normally, I play through opening day and the beginning of the year is much more detailed. But I've learned a lot from doing my A's franchise where we spent like the first 30 some episodes going through a few years. And ultimately, I don't think that... Those are the years we remember by the end. And I'd like to spend less time on some of those formative years in this series. Doesn't mean I'm simulating the whole season here and we're going to August right now. But I think that we should move at a fast pace. And I'd love your feedback down below. There are changes I want to make to this series compared to my A's that uh, will make it go quicker early on. And I want to know if you like it or not. 
So at this point, Paul Goldschmidt already leads the team with six home runs. He and Nolan Arenado are playing up to the expectations, maybe even beyond. But there's no beating regression. It's going to happen. It is inevitable. Goldschmidt can play this well. He's still regressing in a contract year on a 3-7 and seven team. The guys you expect to do pretty well are, for the most part, so far. I'm also really impressed by Mason Wynn, who's hitting a 355 right now, which I don't expect him to be a high average guy in his first year, but with a hot start in this game, MLB The Show really does a good job of capturing those hot and cold streaks for players, and you'll see results that don't exactly match a player's overall, and it's one of the things I love about playing this game is you can play a 70 overall over an 80 and know you're better off doing so based on streaks and what you're actually seeing them do. Now, we are having some players struggle, notably Brendan Donovan and Victor Scott in center field. I know his defense is going to be really fun to watch, but will his bat keep him in the lineup? This is not going to be good enough for much longer. But I'm probably going to hold off from anything drastic until we have players come off the IL. So I edited in one more little injury here for Sonny Gray. I gave him a, a long-term stomach ache, which uh, might actually be appendicitis if you're not uh, careful about that. He's not going to come off the IL for a little bit. We're about to get Lars Newtbar, and then I'll start shuffling things around once our outfield gets healthier. I'm playing on Hall of Fame difficulty, and these are all the settings that I've used going back to the, the A's franchise, and I don't anticipate any changes. There were a, a couple more options in this game that weren't available in the previous one, but I have no interest in using the pitch clock, especially against the CPU. Like, they're going to wait for me. And as far as sliders go, I don't really mess with these much in MLB. It's really just the trade and injury sliders. And I'm going with the simulator injury I had for the A's franchise until I see anything different. And then trade frequency. I always start my franchises with this on very low. So like the first month of the year isn't filled with the bad trades you tend to see in franchise. After a while, I will raise it. But for the first couple months... I like to keep things a little under control. But anyway, we're on to a series against the Philadelphia Phillies. And this is where I'm actually going to start to play with this team. And we'll go through some full games and the more traditional experience. And you bet we're going to be playing this series. They're 8-2? and two? Maybe the Oakland A's saw my series and now they believe that they too can be a winning baseball team. Anyway, the Philadelphia Phillies are coming to St. Louis, and that's where we're going to play our first full game here together. You know, this kind of feels like a big moment for me. I just spent the last year playing all these games with the A's, and now I'm moving on to the Cardinals, and now it's real. I have to play with a new team. I no longer have all those prospects that we drafted and developed, and built a team that could go win a World Series with. So we're moving on. Miles Michaelis. Two brilliant starts already this year. Can he keep it up facing the Philadelphia Phillies? They're 7-2 coming in. Pretty strong roster out east. And we're off and running here. You'll notice I use the classic pitching interface. I aim after pitching uh, or selecting the pitch and the ratings take over. That's ultimately the experience I look for in franchise. I want the players to matter more than I do. Now, yes, when batting, like I control swing timing, which is a really important um, like part of the game in terms of your success. That's in there finally. But I, I like to highlight areas that allow player ratings to matter, and I'm also experimenting with one that I didn't use in the A's franchise. So Michaelis just walked Turner, who has blazing speed, so ball four might as well basically be a double, especially because I gave Contreras the day off. Oh, they're tracking how many times I can throw over now in this game. All right. I did not realize... 
down and into Whit Merrifield. But I did edit a setting so that when the ball's in the air and you're tracking where it's going to go, and that's a base hit in the center field, the accuracy of like that ball trail will depend on player ratings. I just want to see what that is like. It's just one more way to make the player ratings matter. There are obviously like auto fielding settings and more I could do to make it only the players mattering, but I like playing the game a lot. I just like it where uh, I can play the game, but the players have more control over the outcome. But we got Bryce Harper with two on, a 1-1 count, and now Michaelis gets ahead. Got him! 12-6 curveball. And a trophy. We're winning trophies here on the first day of the series, essentially. Oh, yeah, they got Kyle Schwarber. Looks at a fastball there high, a strike. We got Schwarber behind now. Michael is... Oh, it's past win! And that's going to go all the way to the wall, and it will plate two. Kyle Schwarber doing the early inning damage on a play Mason Wynn nearly made. And something hit that sharp would have been two. Now into right, a late jump here from Walker, and it's Castellanos who will get them their third run. You'll notice that delayed reaction initially for Walker. And that's another example of the player ratings really mattering. He is not a great fielder. He really does fit better as a DH, and once our outfield is healthier, I imagine he will get a lot of run as a DH. However, I still want to see if he can become a better fielder. He's not going to if he doesn't play. Michaelis misses, but still strikes out Real Muto as we try to get out of this messy inning. Not going to happen quite yet. Center field, here comes Scott. Charging and firing too late. It's 4 nothing Phillies. So this is really not going well for our guy, Miles Michaelis. We went over a couple of great starts for him earlier. And now it looks like everything's evening out. Arenado flips it across and we're finally done. Christopher Sanchez hasn't even thrown a pitch in. Already is looking like he's in line for a victory. I got Mason Wynn leading off with this hot start. Getting a righty in there to face a lefty. I may have to tweak my camera still a little bit. I did edit it somewhat. I've been trying to use the same camera for like the last five years. I always just like grab a screenshot and load up the new version of the show and try to recreate it. But it... For some reason, it was a little bit different in this game. Anyway, 0-2 already on Win, the rookie shortstop, who has a ton of potential, was the Cardinals' top prospect, and now no longer is considered a prospect. Ooh, that sounded pretty nice. Deep center field. Win flies out. He's not a developed hitter. Certainly does not have the power yet. And there's a look at our starting lineup with Goldschmidt, Arenado, and Walker. Three power bats there in a row. And then I have four straight lefties. Not really ideal today facing a lefty. But our bench is pretty thin and also has lefties on it. Like Matt Carpenter. Been a while since I hit with this guy. Paul Goldschmidt was a part of my first ever franchise. And it's fitting I get a hit with him first. Back in my Twins franchise, I made a signing of him, and it was one of the biggest moves we ever made. And now I'm trying to speed run, getting rid of him, essentially. Nolan Arenado next, and a base hit to right. That's a few swings here that aren't half bad. But how about Jordan Walker? We really need him to reach his ceiling as a hitter. And it's lifted out to deep left field. I think that's got a chance, and it's gone! Jordan Walker, three-run shot. And we got ourselves seven runs already in this game. What is going on? 
He's given us a lot of good pitches to hit. And now the lefties, so it's really going to be a challenge. You've got Gorman and Walker as your two young players that I think you're really going to count on. Mason Wynn, it's not a guarantee with where his hitting ratings are. And the same is true for Victor Scott. But that's kind of the, the young four-player core I look at right now with this team. Is Did that catch him? Apparently not. Inside out and popped up to short. Two down. Alec Burleson. A 62 overall, I want to say, at 25 years old. Doesn't lead me to believe he's going to be someone we count on for long. Right down the middle. I'm not sure if they just have some guys who are really tall or if my camera needs a little more adjusting so the bat isn't like all cut off like that. Three straight miss with Victor Scott on deck. Good opening inning for the Redbirds. And now the payoff pitch. Bouncer right side. And that has to be one of the longest innings I've played in some time. Well, I don't really trust what we have for a bullpen right now, so why don't we see if Michaelis can get it under control. Quick out of Christian Pache. Scorch to right, and that's a base hit for Trey Turner. We can't throw the fastball anymore. He has no confidence, so we're going to see how far the sinker can take us. He goes, and yeah, Trey Turner is safe. Oh my, that has a chance to go. Merrifield foul by eight feet. And instead, base hit down the line. Turner can walk home. And it's a 5-3 Phillies lead. You know, Michaelis isn't the most overpowering guy, and if he can't hit his spots, there's not really any sense in... Leaving him out there any longer. We got a full count, though, on Bryce Harper. And a grounder to Gorman. I also have it so there is no, like, accuracy meter when fielding. It's all up to player ratings there. Well, that's a much better inning, at least. He only gave up the one. I'd love to see us successfully develop Victor Scott. It's been tough for me lately to find outfielders in the show that already have, like, proven defensive ability. I'm okay developing the bat. I've wanted some different archetype players, and to me, Victor Scott is that player I never had the chance to draft last year. Yikes. But it's going to take some work, and already he's only hitting, like, 121. And he might need more time at AAA. Like, there's a lot of injuries... So, if there weren't three guys on the IL, he probably wouldn't be on the big league roster. It's just the way things work out right now with the numbers. And another outfielder that uh, we're playing today is Michael Ciani. Lefty hitting 231. Ciani the other way. And caught. Michael is trying to come back and give us another frame. And instead, that one is back and gone. I think he's probably done for today. Not even trying to throw a strike. It's an 0-2 slider. I want that off the plate. And he throws it center cut. This bullpen really concerns me, though. Like, the ERAs are already double digits for most of our players. Like, who's going to keep us in this game here? It's already a 6-3 ball game. I could use a strike here when I hit one. Oh, my God. He just took out John King. It's a base hit. King is down. I think he's going to shake this one off. John King is going to gut this out. What a battler he is. Brandon Marsh just smoked one to right field. 
That is gone. What is going on? It is eight to three. We just can't get out. What did I just get a trophy for? I've given up how many home runs? Oh, for not skipping the replay. Good to know it doesn't take much to get trophies here. Mason win at short. Yes, nice play. He should also have excellent defense for us at a critical position. I don't anticipate actually sending him down here in year one unless he was hitting under 200 for a long time and hurting his own development. Herrera should be able to take care of that. Arenado at third base. Maybe next time we'll actually get a zero on the board. We haven't really shown we have the offense to keep up with teams on days like this. Oh, Goldie. Deep left field. Come on. Out of here. Solo shot. Man, there is nothing but meatballs tonight on both sides. Seven homers for Goldie. Who wants to send me two of their best prospects? Fireworks are still going off. It's eight to four. And this one on the ground. Sanchez, not all that sharp in this either. That was the same pitch he gave up the home run to Goldie on. So we're on the board with homers from Jordan Walker and Paul Goldschmidt. Slide to right now off the bat of Walker, but that one's going to be a routine play. Ooh, we might have a play here. Gorman reaches on the jammed single. They'll rule that a hit. Burleson now. That's headed to the gap, and it's down. On to third, sliding in is Gorman. Maybe we can keep up here. But it's going to take a third straight lefty-lefty hit. And a bit of a breakthrough here for Victor Scott. Rolled it over to second softly. And the inning is over. But we've had six half innings so far, and there have been runs in five of them. I mean, he's got to start getting outs eventually, right? He has eight innings pitched. Clearly, he can get outs. Just uh, ignore the whole ERA thing being a 10-13 right now. I mean, it's not going to be a hitless inning, that's for sure. Yeah, Bryce Harper would be hitting 700 against lefties. That works great for me. And it's going to go up even further. Base hit center field. Sprinting to third and making it is Merrifield. Am I really about to give up 20 runs in this game? Because that's what it feels like. Base hit Schwarber. Another run scored here in the fourth. Look, I can't just keep putting in new pitchers every inning. You're just going to have to figure it out. Walker out to make the play. And now first and third. You know, I expected some struggles this year. That's why I picked the Cardinals. One of the reasons. I didn't expect this. This is like what I would imagine if I were doing another Oakland A's series. And that one is muscled to deep left. Back goes Siani, and it is out of here. 12 on the board for the Phillies. We're about to set some records. If anybody can throw a scoreless inning in this game, you're going to become our new top reliever. The bar is not set high right now. I'm begging anybody to have a scoreless inning. We already know it's not going to be Liberator. Mason win. That's to deep left off the wall. Great to see a hit like that from him, though. We're going to celebrate the 
development and the growth of the youth on this team. The scoreboard does not concern me right now. Bring him home, Goldie. Base hit center field. Wave him home. Mason Wynn will score. All right, now we turn to Andrew Kittredge. He has not allowed a run this year. Can this be our first zero? Ahead of Christian Pache. And now the count goes even, or rather full. How do you take that? Good slider that time. Come on. We're going to double up Trey Turner. We're about to reverse our fortunes here. Come on. Three and two. He wants another slider. All right. We just can't, like, get rewarded for any good pitches. We're getting destroyed for all the bad ones. Finally, strike three looking. Whit Merrifield is three for three. Turn the clocks back. Whit Merrifield's elite. Ooh, that could be two. He got him there. And it's the only one we get. Bryce Harper is the final boss here for Andrew Kittredge. And trying to throw a zero. Fly ball right field. The impossible has happened. Ripped into right field. It's been a strong day for Nolan Gorman. And I wonder how much longer Christopher Sanchez will stay in the game. Gorman isn't one of those lefties you have to protect. And I like that a lot. He can hit anybody. Burleson now. Oh, he went the wrong way thinking it might be caught. We got first and second. You know, this ain't a bad time for a bunt. Actually, it kind of is. I'm not going to do it. Victor Scott inside out. Ooh, hold him. Hold him, though. It's loaded now. Base is loaded. We're going to pull off a comeback here. It's going to be the most unbelievable game you've ever seen to start this series. Michael Ciani. Down the line and foul. Come on, Ciani. One and two. Grounded at second. It is a fielder's choice, and we continue to chip away. Now what I do, score a run without getting a hit. I feel like I'm getting all the trophies that aren't actually, like, good achievements to be proud of. And now Yvonne Herrera, the backup catcher. That's down and in. Herrera draws a walk, and they are loaded up for Mason Wynn. 18 combined runs and a towering fly from win. And that ends the fifth. Slow roller. Win not able to make the play there. Might have to lay out in those spots. Giving Kittredge a second inning. Someone's got to go multiple here. Please go foul. Got him. Good fastball from Andrew Kittredge. Let's go. I'm racking up the trophies today. There we go. Real Muto's down on strikes. And Marsh grounds out to Arenado. I think we found our best reliever. All right, the Phillies bring in Taiwan Walker. You know, it's a new game, so I haven't, like, had much experience with it. I assume that the gameplay is more or less the same in terms of, like, you know, it's not like one year is, like, oh, now everybody hits home runs every swing, or, like, the gameplay dramatically changes. I like that about the show. 
So, like, I'm playing this game today, and all we're seeing is hard hit contact and a bunch of scoring. I just want some confirmation that it's not like the game is completely different now. It's just two pitchers that had bad days. Goldschmidt on the ground, and he is retired. Let's do an instant replay, but with Nolan Arenado. Ooh, couldn't make the play. A little E6 there for Trey Turner. And that's going to bring up Jordan Walker. One for three. In the center we go. Arenado, he ain't making it to third. Well, we got six runs on 12 hits. And now Nolan Gorman, two for three, trying to chip away further. Yeah, Walker's already pitching him much tougher. Keeping that sinker down. It's two and two. And he got him looking. Changed the eye level that time. And that's going to leave the inning up to Alec Burleson. Might have to have a rain delay. And he popped him up. Behind third base. And a zero. It is now JoJo Romero's turn. Ooh, good cutter there to get ahead of Stott. The 2-2 two -two is fouled off. I'm noticing like every pitcher so far has had trouble controlling their secondary pitches. It's really tough to pitch some of these spots the way I want to. Going back to the heat here. And Stott lines it to right because it was right over the middle. JoJo getting ahead of Christian Pache. And he's gone on strikes. Good changeup. Trey Turner now falling behind. Can JoJo get him? Yes, he can on three pitches. Line drive, it is caught by Michael Ciani. We're racking up the zeros now. We're finding some pitchers who can get some outs. Bring it with you. No, that's not where I wanted it. But still, that's a base hit for Scott. We got to boost this guy's average somehow. Oh, you already know what's coming next, too. 99 steel, 97 speed. There he goes. Safe at second base. Just like that, Victor Scott into scoring position. 21.42 miles per hour. We're down 0-2 with Yvonne Herrera. Not chasing that. Uh-oh, that's strike three. And that'll bring up Mason Wynn. And again, strike three chased. Bryce Harper. Did he go? He does. Strike three. The bullpen's putting in work now. Oh, Romero. Gold glove reliever right there. Give me one more strike here. Two and two on Castellanos. And it's into right center. Walker makes the catch. Goldschmidt already three for four. Walker nearly gets him on that split. Base hit center field. It's a four hit night. Arenado, center field and down. Let's rally again here in the eighth. Let's see Walker again with a three-run homer. How about that? Taiwan Walker missing low. This game has seen 30 hits and 18 runs. Is this enough action for you? I think it's too much. Let's see if we can get on the board again, though. Walker, oh, it's cut off. Taiwan Walker starts the double play. And that's going to leave this inning up to Nolan Gorman in a six-run game. 
Line drive. Oh, it's off the glove. Gorman drives home our seventh. And it's a five-run game. And Burleson strikes out to wrap up the eighth. You know, it's been a good showcase for a lot of players, despite how messy this game has been. All right, bring in the 56 overall, Ryan Fernandez. We have a nice little scoreless inning streak here. I'd like to continue. Six, seven, eight hitters. There you go. It's a good spot for the cutter. And how about the curve? Grounder to Gorman. See, it ain't that hard. Ooh, a nasty cutter there. Ryan Fernandez. Six really good pitches. He struck him out on the high fastball. Good to know that our 56 overall reliever is better than Miles Michaelis on this day. Oh, that should have been a strike. How do you even hit that? All right, this is for a 1-2-3 inning. And not going to happen. Base hit. Fly ball left field. I'll take it. Bullpen helped us clean up here at the end. Eventually, they had to stop scoring. 12-7. And here is Victor Scott leading off the bottom half of the ninth. Might want to put down a bunt again. That was kind of a good idea. Instead, we swing away, and it's a strikeout. Now we got Michael Ciani behind in the count. Taiwan Walker pitch 50, and got him. He has been so much tougher to face. And that's a wrap on this one. Walker finishes it really strong. And the Phillies take this game and drop us to 3-8 and eight on the season. It is an ugly start for our Cardinals as we just get to know this team. But it might be a team we have to get to know all over again because we could be entering sell mode here before too long. Well, we ended up actually having more zeros than anything in this game. It just took forever to get there. But like I said, a 3-8 and eight start. Now, we're about to get Lars Newtbar back now off the injured list, and we'll have to make a roster move for that. So we're getting a little bit healthier. And I do think I have this Sunny Gray injury probably a little too long. What I'm actually able to do here is remove his injury, but I'm just going to give him another one that's just like a little bit shorter. Because I was reading he might come back this week in real life. So I'm just going to have him probably on the bench and available. And I'll be like the last injury like manipulation that I do here. So next episode, I have a couple roster moves to make. And we'll continue on here in the first month of year one. But that is going to be where we wrap up today. This team does not look great. Paul Goldschmidt has looked great. But this does not look like a winning team. And I cannot picture the pitching being good enough. Especially with how incomplete the offense has been. We're reliant on a few guys standing out. But you know what? I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments your takes here on the Cardinals in year one. And I'm going to end this video before the thunderstorm wipes out my power. So that is it for today, everybody. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you all next time with much more Cardinals franchise. Have a great day.